Hello, I'm Dr. Christopher Rapuano, the Chief of the Cornea Service at Wills Eye Hospital. I'm also the President of the Cornea Society, and I was the Program Chair for the World Cornea Congress 7 that just went on prior to the ASCRS meeting in San Diego. I'm happy to say the WCC7 was a huge success. I'd like to just tell you a little bit about a poster that Dr. Rick Putman and I presented at both the WCC and at ASCRS. We want to find out what the world literature said about tear osmolarity testing in the diagnosis and management of dry eye. Turns out that there's a lot of literature out there regarding this issue. We looked at uh, peer-reviewed articles in PubMed from 2000 um, dealing with this question. We found about 160 papers on this. These were evaluated for quality of the paper, and there were about, I, think, I believe, about 100 that were felt to be medium or high quality. And then we also looked at whether these papers and uh, studies were sponsored by industry, so there was a vested financial interest, and there were about 50 of those. So if you take all the articles and look at whether the authors felt that tear osmolarity testing was helpful in the diagnosis and management of dry eyes versus neutral versus negative, a little over 70% of all the articles we looked at felt that tear osmolarity testing was positive. If we just take the moderate to high quality articles, also a little over 70% felt that tear osmolarity testing was positive. If you look at the, just the, the independent studies, so non-industry sponsored, again, a little over 70% found that tear osmolarity testing was helpful. And if you just take high quality independent studies, again, just over 70% felt that tear osmolarity testing was helpful. So in conclusion, looking at world literature since 2000, um, tear osmolarity testing has been shown to be helpful in both the diagnosis and the management of dry eye patients.